Hey, welcome back to the Thursday night issue. Thursday night. Where the hell am I? It's a time warp. It, it, it's it's inter it's interplanetary. We're at the Tuesday night here at the Black Cat Lounge, where the elite meet. Where else? Next to the dumpster transfer station. Hey, I got to tell you guys, I had a great week, and my God, I had the biggest laugh I've had in a long, long time, and I really did chuckle a lot. Hey, guys, how are you? Ken, Melanie, welcome to the show. Uh, I've got to go, and I've got to share this. Now, everybody knows that um, I did a lot of work at the uh, uh, the the uh, uh, the house out in uh, uh, where wherever the hell I was. But anyway, <laughs> it was uh, a haunting. Well, the first time we did first time we did the uh, uh, taping, I did it for a different show, and the Virgin House. Uh, it was pretty active, you know, when I was out there and we did a different show and they used us actually as the principal actors in it, which is always cool. A little cheesy, but, you know, cool. This one was total recreation, total recreation. And um, hey, Peg, hey, Chris Chisla is in the room. How are you, buddy? Hey, Danielle. Uh, and I, I have to share something with you guys. Uh, they did. I don't know how they found this double that portrayed me they portrayed me as i would say a 350 pound uh paranormal investigator from new jersey it was great i was i was crying and let me just show you uh what i mean by that i this is this is this is a still from the show a haunting return to the virgin house that's what I look like normally, you know. I I think it was a little bit early in the morning when we were doing that interview, so uh, you know, my I'm sort of pasty ass white. You know, There's, I I usually have a little bit more color than that. Well, speaking about having a little color, this, my friends, this is my double. I'm telling you, this guy, I could just give him my ID and he could cross the Mexican border with no problem. That guy looks just like me. That the, the the resemblance is uncanny, isn't it? It was it was kind of funny. Um there was there was a couple couple things in there that I was I was shaking my head at. That's the only way that I can describe it. Uh you know, there were some things with the seance. Uh that didn't happen in that way. I, you know, uh there was se there have been several seances done at the house. I had done one of the first ones there. And that's not exactly what happened. And, you know, there's a lot of things that they kind of kind of just mixed up as for for, you know, to make a smooth show. So uh, I knew what I was getting into, but I have to say that I was very, very happy with uh, my portion of the interviews. I think uh, they represented a decent idea of what went on and why it went on. And I think that that's what was so important by it. So I think that was just a great thing that. You know, little a little a little spotlight here in Western New York, a little spotlight on the Virgin House. Uh, you know, Kathy is a great, great girl, the great lady that owns it. Janet was in there, so I think she's <laughs> Janet's a great medium, so she was a lot of fun. So anyway, that was uh that was that was my little chuckle for the whole week. Now, I got a I got a really cool thing that I want to show everybody. This one our guest, one of our guests, Frank, today, uh he is co-organizing this. It's a family. Uh, it's a family ghost hunt. It's actually a paranormal one-on-one where you guys get a chance to bring your family in, your kids in, and you get a chance to go and learn. You know the basics, just the basics of ghost hunting. How to use some of the basic equipment. Uh, they'll have it there on site, and it's going to be done during the day because, in all honesty, I've gotten probably more evidence during the day than I have at night. It's a, it's just a great, I think it's a great way of doing things. And seriously, Lockport, uh, 247 with Paraniagara is an outstanding location. Uh, it is haunted as hell. I won't lie. I mean, I've had a lot of, a lot of, you know, activity there. Frank's had a lot of activity there, but this is going to be a fun day. And for 25 bucks for the entire family, come on, come on. You can't go to McDonald's for 25 bucks for, with your family. You know, go there and learn how to work with everything. And you guys will get a chance to see what, you know, how things, you know, to actually handle the equipment that you see 
the investigators handle on TV. So it's going to be a phenomenal, just a phenomenal time. So just do it, okay? Just do it. And when you get there, tell them that you saw it. Where else here at the Black Cat Lounge? Because why you guys got drunk on a Tuesday night and you ended up at home and you decided to you decided to uh, butt dial on on Facebook and you ended here. Well, before we go any further, I want to bring my guests on today. I'm thrilled by them taking the time because, well, one of the two is always is pretty busy. Not going to tell you which one. Not going to tell you which one. But I want to go and I want to bring on two really great people. Their show, their current show right now is Lock Up Paranormal, where they go and they get a chance to really investigate prisons. They get a chance to investigate asylums. They talk about the haunted history of these locations. Uh, they're both, both past corrections officers. So they really know what's going on and they can tell you uh, some of the things that they've experienced over years, some of the things that they've actually fallen into. I'm, that's the best way I'm going to say fallen into because as a paranormal investigator myself, I'm always falling into things. So I want to bring on Lydia Manson, who is not just another pretty face. Lydia Manson is a phenomenal, talented person. She's a great actress. She does a lot of scary movies. You know, so I mean, as someone who has done like zombie movies and all that good stuff myself, I mean, that's a special place in my heart. I absolutely love it. I think it's so much fun. And she's out there working all the time. She has a po another podcast, uh, Just the Deets on Thursday nights at 9 p.m. And uh, some of her acting credits are The House That Eats Flesh and Reunion from Hell. That sounds like my high school reunion. 19 class of 1975. Yeah, this is great. Uh, where is everybody? Oh, you guys really went far in life, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, I think these two. I think these two actually went and like uh, uh, took care of, babysat most of the class of '75 where I went to high school. And Frank, <laughs> and Frank, my buddy Frank Kupka is a great friend of mine. He's a real. The, I got to tell you what, he's a talented paranormal investigator. He's a he's a pretty good speaker, you know. You know, for he doesn't mumble. Uh, you know, sometimes he doesn't even need notes. Uh, you know, he, he's okay. You know, he likes to go and he's, he's a personal strength trainer. So he likes to go and strangle tractors and chew on tires and, and throw weights around, you know? So if you guys ever want to go and see him, he's at the Buffalo uh, Zoological Gardens on Friday, <laughs> Friday afternoons. And he's, he's in there rest. He's in there wrestling gorillas. He, that's, that's his big thing now when he's not paranormal investigating, but he is with the house band at, uh, Lockport 247. And I got to tell you what, he's a great, he's a great cook. You'll see him a lot on uh, Joe Perry's uh, Paranormal Oddities show, Paranormal Cooking. And we'll both be on there very, 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 very soon. So guys, oh, and he's a member of, and he'll yell at me if I don't, listen, he's a big dude, he'll strangle me. So I want to make sure that I get it. He's also a member of Buffalo Phantom Hunters. So please welcome my guests, Lydia and Frank. To where else? The Black Cat Lounge. Hey guys, how are you? Hi. Hi. That was some type of an introduction. I love a Thank very you. intense intro. Right? Well, you know what? Listen, everybody's got to everybody's got to you know hang out and really understand that I I'm thrilled with the, the two of you. First off, you guys, listen, you guys got some kahunas. You know, I'll just tell you that right now. You guys got some kahunas. Yeah, you know, sometimes. You know, they're sometimes they're invisible, but you know, sometimes they're there. But I just want to let everybody know that both of you guys, I appreciate what you guys have done in the past. Past corrections officers, holy crap, that is like, I don't know if I could do that because I'd be like one of those guys that just want to go and gas everybody. You know, I'm just I'm one of those guys. There's a lot of rules against that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, know. I, I, pro I probably last. I probably last about six weeks and. That would be the end of me, you know. <laughs> I'd either get shanked or or I'd be like gassing people. But you know, and we won't talk about Frank and that problem he has either. But that's about that. That's Believe a, that's, me, thank that's God a, I don't have to be around him to do the show. <laughs> that that's a story for another oh, time. I'm supposed, I'm supposed to be nice. Oh my you God, you are supposed <laughs> to be nice. Thank you, you're, Lydia. You're always nice, Frank. You know yeah. he's he's just you know it's he's funny because when Frank and I get on different TV. shows. He gets beat up all the time, and that's and I only beat him up because, well, I can take you it. know, 
He, yeah, he can. He's got big. He's got big, strong arms. You know. <laughs> oh, and we already got. We already got a good comment from the from the peanut gallery here from Joe <laughs> Piarney. <laughs> he's batshit crazy. Yes. Yeah, he is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's there's no doubt about that. But, Aren't we all though? Well, yes. we have to be to do this a little bit. You know, I mean, to be honest with you, I you know, it's sort of like nature versus nurture. Like with me, I've done this since you know I was a kid. So I think I had I think I had the wrong, you know, either I could have gone either way. I could have gone like totally straight and like uh you know been a been a rocket scientist or just hang out and talk to things that may not be there, you know. So it's it's a fine line either way. But either way, talking about things that aren't really there half the time, let's talk to Lydia about her career in in uh uh, you yes. like that in acting? That's you like that? Me. You like that segue, oh. Lydia? Oh, I work. I work on I'm these gonna things. I'm going to try and position myself because my room is a mess. No, it's not. Believe me, everything looks beautiful, baby. Everything looks beautiful, <laughs> and you just do nothing but make it glow. That's what. You, oh, that's what it is. You know. You I know, have this backdrop, as you can see, but yet I never use it. Well, so really, it's just a waste of money at this point. Oh, just, all, my all I'm backdrop gonna... is like skulls and oh, I have iced tea in the corner over there. <laughs> that is totally relevant to what we're talking about, Frank. Squirrel. Yeah, listen, I've got, I've, probably, I've got, I've got, I've got twelve, I've got twelve backdrops. You want to know the truth? I'm too lazy to put them up. That's why I just use my office. It's it just as awesome. easy. Tim, it looks awesome. You don't need a backdrop. Well, anywhere I go, I look awesome. But anyway, we got to talk to Lydia now. So, Frank, okay. you know, we're going to talk to Lydia we, oh, okay. because because she's actually. Ladies first. He's more important than I am. I know. Uh, I get it. Well, I'm it's pretty to... close, but you know how it is. Lydia, I want to talk to you about what fascinates you by these about the parts that you take. Because you do take a lot of, you know, I'm going to call them thriller. I don't like calling them chillers. I don't like calling them, you know, slasher. They're, they're, they're you know, they're sort of thriller parts and roles. Why do you take the, these these type of uh, these type of roles outside of the fact that they pay they pay the bills and you can put gas in your gas in do your car on Friday? The bills? No, they don't. I never. <laughs> whenever, believe me, when I was doing the I indie stuff, the actress will tell you that if you're joining it for the money, you are joining it for the wrong reasons because there is absolutely no no money. Um. Once, <laughs> once in a while, you get a free lunch. That's what I work for. <laughs> but but why 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 these type of roles? Um, I'm just oh I'm. Just highlighted. Okay, hello. We have actually done my makeup. I just put on some eyeliner. Um, you look but, marvelous. I'm telling you, you are Marvy, baby. You are Marvy. I I didn't get home until after 3 a.m. last night. Um, driving back from Tennessee, where I had just wrapped um this film called Reunion from Hell 2. Um, but as far as like mostly doing films in the horror genre, it's mostly apparently I just have the look for it. Um. <laughs> and I was asked one time on a podcast, like, oh, what do I do to get ready for the different characters I play? And I was like, oh, well, you know, most of the characters I've played so far are just like a goth alternative chick. So I really haven't really had to dig deep to play them because I just kind of like show up and I'm like, what up? <laughs> so, I mean, I've always loved um, horror. So for me to you know, be welcomed into the horror community has just been um, super amazing. But what's, yeah. who is, who would you say is either someone who has been an inspiration to you in that genre, not paranormal in the movie genre or someone that you actually go and you look up to? Um, when it comes to acting and things like that, my idol has been and always will be Marilyn Monroe. Um, which I know, like, if you think about, like, horror and things, you're just like, oh, my God, like, Marilyn doesn't fit in with that at all. But I feel as though Marilyn is someone who is great to look up to because, you know, she she knew what she had to do to get ahead and she and she did it and she wasn't ashamed of it. Um, and, you know, she's been dead for her how many years and we still all talk about her all the time and we look up to her. So um, I just absolutely love her. Oh, well, that's that. I'll tell you what, that's a fantastic person to look up to. I really do. I think it's a great, I think it's a super great uh, uh, icon. I love that. I love the whole idea of being an icon. Now, Frank. Yes. <laughs> let, me ask, let me ask you something. Okay. 
Frank. How much do you love Lydia? I know. Oh my God. Listen, I am trying. I am <laughs> trying to get into. I'm like taking over. I, I'm taking over one of her slasher films. Just put a cover on me and let me sh let me kill some co couple of people. I don't I don't need to be seen. I'm too ugly to be seen anyway. So just cover me and let me let me kill a couple of people. I'm good. Frank, Frank, I have seen you on Discovery Plus on the serial killer uh, on the serial <laughs> killer <laughs> series. So I don't want to hear that crap. Anyway, so, yes. <laughs> yeah, great. I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna be traveling with you this year. So that I great. Oh, Listen, I just want to kill somebody. Thank we're you. We're gonna have a good time this year and do well. Yeah, I'm kind of a, we'll go we'll get into that. I'm kind of afraid of that. But Frank, <laughs> what got you into the paranormal? Because I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, you're a you're a jock type guy. You know. You know, you got that. You got your old uh, number tattooed on your on on your leg, and you got some I other do. stuff tattooed in other places that we will not I'm even cover. I am shocked that you brought that up, but yes, I do. I absolutely. Yeah. Do. Well, I what do you think? I'm not observant. Give me a break here. That's what I do for a living. I have to look I, at these I, things. Listen, you know? I, I was very observant when I was when I was working too, and I just never thought that would come up. But okay. Well, um, come on, come on. You're walking around. Lydia, he walks around town. He wears hot pants. Usually they're silver hot pants. He works out in hot pants. This I is what I have. Oh, this I don't want to picture it, but I can. Oh, my God. It's an un <laughs> unbelievable picture. But anyway, Frank, what is it that, let me ask you, why did you get, in, you know, it's kind of funny because why did, you know, you're not the paranormal guy. I mean, you're not the, you Typical? know, yeah, you're not because I mean, I've, I've been in this field a long time. Yes, you have. And yeah, longer than, you know, longer than yeah. more Miss Lydia has been alive. But and listen, Miss Lydia, that's exactly I that why, young. listen, that is exactly why I use him as my mentor because I pick his brain as little as, as he is. So good at flattery. As much information as I can. In other words, he in other words, he he learns how to schmooze people for me. That's that's absolutely what it is. but anyway, absolutely. why enough enough about me? Let's talk about you. Okay, you know, I, listen, if I have I don't have that squirrel icon up. Every time, every, <laughs> every 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 time he goes off, he goes off uh, topic. Yeah. Lydia on the show goes and uses a squirrel. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> what is? Why did you get involved in this stuff? Because I mean, seriously, I mean seriously, and this is on the level. No, no. Uh, I mean, really, because most guys I know that got into this are usually geeks. And my friend's I'm not, not a geek. Oh, well, he's a geek, but that's in a different story. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, I, I'm a geek up to a certain point, you know. Well, I mean, I, you know, and uh, I've always, well, of course, I mean, I brought, I got into this because of the religion. But what is it that brought you, my friend? What is it that, that brought you into this? Well, I've always been interested in science and the science of things. Um, we've all had different experiences as we were kids and growing up, and you know, like. I can talk about, oh, well, you know, I did. This is what happened when I was a kid, and it got me into this. And it's really not. I mean, all those things I questioned when I was younger and growing up and this, that, and the other thing. And then getting into corrections and, and the stuff you see there, whether it's physical or not, it's definitely something that makes you question another existence. And then, you know, I really have to give a lot of credit to – my partner getting me into a lot of this because he made a phone call one day when he was still living in Rochester and said that, you know, we should start hunting and doing this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, you know, the old saying goes, I say to him, I go, listen, dude, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I got rid of my shotgun years ago. I don't know what kind of hunting. <laughs> you do. And he was like, no, you dumbass, ghost hunting. I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about? He was, you know, like they do on TV. We, you know, we can do that. We'd have a good time with it. And it got me thinking, I'm like, well, all right, yeah, let's. And so really to get a kickstart and to get a kick in the, kick in the ass, so to speak, that that's really what kicked it in. And then once we started doing like public stuff and things like that, it really piqued my interest because it, it, everybody knows during a public hunt, you don't get a lot of things because of the contamination between a lot of people and talking and everything else. And, and I did say, I said to him, I go, look, if we're going to do this, we really need to do this on our own so we can – get evidence and really put this stuff out there for people to see. So we know what's, so they can see what we see. And that's really how it all came about for the most part. He gave me a kick in the ass and I just ran with it. And, you know, we ran with it for a while and, and things have taken a different turn and now I'm running with things. And, 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 and that's really how it started. I mean, I, I, I credit all, I give him a lot of credit to giving me that kick in the ass that I needed because there's some times that, 
yeah, we're interested in something or it's there, it's in the back of your mind, but you, you always need that little push. And there's always somebody or something that always gives you that push. And, and he was that for me. And now I'm, you know, now it's just snowballed into different things. And, you know, I'm looking for more answers and again, working with you and, and working with Joe Pieri and, and even with Christy and some of the other people that have, that are fantastic in this field. I've learned a lot and there's a lot of things that I still need to learn. A lot of things I still want to do and it's just snowballing from there and, and I'm having a good time with it and I'm just going to keep running with it. So that's, that's basically how it started. Lydia, it's almost like he was at the, at the Oscars and he was, he was thanking everybody. Did you notice that? And I'd like to think, you know, did you have that like, beforehand? Well, no, I did not, <laughs> but I'm going to have notes this week. Good to know. I will, we'll talk about your notes too. <laughs> I give him, I give him a, a constructive criticism. <laughs> anyway, we do have, we, we have a, uh, uh, a question from our, Ariana Chen, my friend Ariana, how are you, Ariana? I hope everything's going well with you. What is both of your dream project and with a group, with a director, or a co-star? So what would be your dream group? And we're gonna go with Lydia first because why? I've already I've already heard enough from Frank. So we're gonna go okay. with you. <laughs> um so when I say dream project, I mean I would assume acting, um, but acting, acting, paranormal, and okay. all of the above. We'll try and touch on a little bit of everything. Um, but as far as acting, like my dream, like project, um, I'm actually working on my own screenplay right now. So it would be a dream of mine to actually like get to make that. That would be a dream come true. Um, <laughs> but I would love to play the role of like a killer in one of these movies. Um, that would be amazing. Uh, I think that would be good. Not that I don't mind dying and being killed in all these movies. That's super <laughs> awesome too. Um, but I think it would be pretty awesome to actually be the one to to do the killing. <laughs> now I now I understand why the two of you work so well together. <laughs> now I understand. There's no doubt. There's no doubt in my mind anymore. Thank you. Uh, remind me, like next when we're all together sometime, to uh, like pay somebody to watch my back. You know, well, like, that's why I joke around when I'm on set because um, I'll be like, "Oh, I can do my own stunts." I was like, "I'm trained in defensive tactics. I learned it in the academy. Like, I I know how to fall the proper way, right? and you know, like all this stuff." So actually, uh, from reunion from Hell Two, I got to do like very minimal, very minimal, like one scene. I get to fall, um, but they're like, "Oh, we'll put cushions down and everything," and I was like, "I'm fine. I can handle it." <laughs> I was like, "I'm good." It's too bad Frank can't, but we, okay, never, I, I didn't say that. Okay, let Frank, same question, buddy. Well, my dream project as an investigator, um, obviously because of my background with prison stuff, I mean, and because- Where's it's Lydia Manson? I know. Yeah, that too. Well, <laughs> my dream project would be to take a team and, and go through Alcatraz. I would absolutely love to be in Alcatraz, whether it be for the night, whether it be for the weekend. That would be- that would be my dream. Um, I would also, um, it would also be a great thrill to co-star in a, one of Lydia's movies, whether it's her screenplay or, or anything else that somebody else does. Like I said, I'll play a killer. You can kill me in the first two minutes. I don't really care. It don't matter. First I would love seconds. to do that. It, what was that? So I'd kill you in the first 30 seconds. That's all good. Whatever. I, that's fine. It, I, I'm good with that. But <laughs> For me, as an investigator, that would be one of my – Alcatraz would absolutely be my dream project. Um, and, again, it would be a team effort. It wouldn't be just myself. I'd, I'd bring, you know, people who wanted to do this, that kind of thing, and we get in, in to do it. I, I would love to do that, and that would be that would be phenomenal. That would, that would be my dream project to do is Alcatraz, absolutely. I had a chance to go, and I, I had a chance to appear, actually, in Alcatraz – with the uh, late Constantinos and we know, you know, the, the tragic story behind what happened with them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did have an opportunity to go there and I just, it, it didn't fit into my schedule. And I, I was filming a pilot and I could not, I just couldn't break away for that weekend. And if that's an unfortunate night, I always, to be honest with you, the pilot sucked. I, <laughs> Lydia, Lydia, when I was moving, and this is a true story. And I think I told Frank this when I was moving, uh, you know, good spiritualists don't have altars. 
bad spiritualists who <laughs> like like practice all sorts of good things, chaos oh. magic and stuff. And your little, <laughs> your little red cabinet. <laughs> Be nice to my little red cabinet. I love your red cabinet. My cabinet is overflowing, and we'll talk about that later. Good. Uh, is it like I, the Indian in the cupboard? Oh, it's uh, yeah, it's it's times twenty, uh, <laughs> times a thousand. Yeah, maybe. But I went and I was packing up a little goddess statue that I had, and as I pulled it up off the altar and I wrapped it up, I see this little piece of paper underneath it, and I opened it up and it said, "Please let this project tank." I looked at it and I knew it was <laughs> it, it was the it was the pilot that I had been working on for A and E Spike and A and E. And, uh, so yeah, it's, you know, one of those, one of those things that just happens. It just happens. It was not a good, it was not a good situation, but now let me, Lydia, let me ask you this. When you were in corrections, yes. did you ever get that, that crazy feeling, the, the ick feeling, did you ever have an experience where like you're your you know your your, your third eye kind of came in the balance and said hey there's something that's going to happen or or even anything paranormal um so the big difference between mine and frank's career and as far as correction goes is frank spent a lot of his time in a maximum prison i did my entire career in a medium facility so I feel as though the maximum security prisons would have a lot more to quote unquote offer as far as like paranormal and things like that. Um, because in the mediums, um, they're, they're a lot newer. Um, they're all set up the same. So, you know, there's, um, a couple of factors like against it right there, but, um, Sometimes you would just go into a shift and you can just feel it in the air. Like, you know what, this is not going to be a good, good 16 hours because most of the time we did 16 hour shifts um you know so you just kind of you're just always scanning like always watching that you know like it's ingrained in us um i'm sure frank still does it too like we'll go out in public you know we go out to eat and we don't face we don't have our back to the doors we always have to be able to see who's coming and going at all times because it's just ingrained in us from working in the prisons um because you never know what's going to happen and you know we we had the ongoing joke um i'm going to go in to work with the same amount of holes as i'm coming out with you know because i don't want to get stabbed oh, um, <laughs> all those things um but yeah there's there's certainly some shifts where it was just Oh my God, like I just know this is not going to be a really good shift. Um, you know, luckily um I was never assaulted or anything like that. So I, you know, fingers crossed <laughs> that I've been on like a film set now. But um yeah, I mean my career was shut I was cut short because I ended up getting hurt responding to a fight, but that was just because apparently I can't run and coordinate myself at the same time <laughs> I ended up falling and I hit my head but um you know like that night still sticks with me um and will always stick with me but um yeah I would I really am just running on with this thought right now <laughs> no I mean I'm gonna be honest with you because of the fact that I've taken uh I've taken natural awareness training with Tom Brown Jr. who is a uh, an American mystic and he's a tracker and he studied under uh an adopted apache grandfather and the, the grandfather's medicine society was very very diligent and when they when they were imparting the knowledge to younger people because you had to project yourself always to where the enemy may be coming through you have to project yourself to what might be going on you have to project yourself constantly you have to be aware constantly I, after i was done with his class i took I took a class at the Omega Holistic Institute in Rhinebeck, New York, with him. Rhinebeck. And I'll tell you what, and look at him. He's got a big smile because he, he knows what's in Rhinebeck, too. That's but cool. Yeah. But uh, I'll never forget when I came back. And, of course, I work for the township here. Man, you automatically, you're looking in all directions. You're feeling that you're getting that tension. I'll never forget I was working on a, I was working on a paving job. And something just told me just get out of the way stupid get out of the way and a car came in and hit one of hit a uh, barricade the barricade shattered and part of it just flew 
I mean, right to where I was standing, if it had hit my shin, I know I can guarantee you that I would have been, I, I would have been injured. I would, it would have been definitely a break. So, I mean, I understand that, but let's take a break right now. You're listening to Black Cat Lounge and our guests tonight are Lydia Manson, actress extraordinaire. And we have, we have Frank. <laughs> no, we have, we have Frank Kupka and the two of them make up the hosts of Lock Up Paranormal. We'll be right back in 30 seconds. The Black Cat Lounge is sponsored by Paranormal Oddities, The Little Store with the Big Heart, Buffalo Phantom Hunters, Patronus Photographic for all of your photography and design needs, Nancy's Sewing Room, Masks, Aprons, Purses and more, and Wild Raven Candles for those magical times. And we are back. Black Cat Lounge, where the elite meet, where else? Next to the dumpster transfer stations. And this is what's so fun about it. I have two of my favorite people on there. And, well, one is one of really a favorite person, and the other one is like some guy that shows up at my door every so often, you know, to feed me. You know, he brings he brings food to my house. He brings so, you food? He doesn't, he's never given me food. Oh, my God, Lydia. Close you know, enough, right? Feed you? Lydia, no, it's fine. Lydia, oh, Lydia, yeah. I, Lydia I swear to God, what he does. Well, I'll tell you right now, Lydia, what he does is he goes and he makes extra. He makes all this food, and then he has so much food left over, he brings it to my house. I get three meals out of everything he, everything he <laughs> cooks in this place. That's what I mean, Italians do. You, I want food made specifically for me, though. I don't want food that's just listen, extra. You oh, tell well, me what you want, and you're coming. He will in do it for you. Oh, and and listen, guys. We were just. I was just recently at a at a soiree where he dropped off a white pizza, and I don't know what he does. Maybe I don't want to know what he does to the pizza. I maybe it's 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 some kind of super it's secret. Not a white sauce. That's what I thought. Oh, I was God. I was wondering about that. It is an amazing, it's an, I gotta tell you, it's, it's just an amazing flavor. So anyway, hey, I just want to let, I want to ask you guys, does this look familiar? Yes, it does. Where did you get that? Oh, this Order is in my, online. come on, this is in my collection. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I do have a collection full of rather unusual things. That's a, what is, but, but, but the question, Lydia, is that really a real one? Or is that one of those you can buy on TV? Because I have one too. I have a I have a real one, and I also have one that was made for me. That's really not actually, necessarily real. Actually, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This one, this was, this is a real one. Nice. This is not. This is not one of the one of the ones that you can you can go and you can you yeah. can buy. You can get these on this one. This definitely didn't come off of eBay. I'll tell you. No, that you, you can get those. You you can get those made. So, I'm I. I'll tell you what. I'll take care of you. I'll hook you up. You gonna hook me up? I'll hook you up. I want one too. Last time, last time he said All hook right, me I'll up. See, I'll see if I can. Hook, I'll I'll see if I can get two. <laughs> I still have my bit key holder for my belt. Do you really? Yes. I mean, I've got my I've got my baton holder and I've got my key clips. I never had one of the bit key holders. I had clips. And I had a three, I had a, a three chain clip, so I had three clips on it. I could put three. I could hold six, six, uh, six rings. Well, that's because that's because you're super special, and that's right? because I was the roundsman, so I had to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots yeah. Of rings get into everything. You know what? He had to have suspenders too because the keys were pulling his pants down. But that's another. You're story. absolutely right. About anyway, that. you know what the worst is? Like if you're doing like an outside trip and you have to be carrying the weapon. Terrible yeah. when you have to go to the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it is. Can't oh tell you, God. I'd be working at the hospital, um, and I, you know, I was usually the junior officer, so I had to carry. Uh, every time I went to go pee, I'm like, pants just dropped to the ground because the gun's so heavy. <laughs> yes, it is. Too much That's information, a, but it, hap it happens. It happens to the rest of us. You, whoop, drop, you I don't, I don't even like a listen. four year old with your pants and your butt hanging out and you're peeing in the toilet. <laughs> listen, I. Listen, we, there, there, at Paranormal Oddities, there is a photograph of Frank in the bathroom. Yeah, that's, but that's, uh, that I am that's as far that's as we're gonna go. We're not gonna go any oh further. So God, if anybody wants, to, if anybody wants I, to see an autographed photo of Frank Kupka, it's in the Paranormal Oddities bathroom, and I am not going any further than that. Anyway, Frank, <laughs> let's go. Is in, a co-ed bathroom? 
No, it's, yeah, it's, well, it was. Yeah. Not no, I'll not anymore. Okay. Not, not like after the man. Listen, not not after Frank was in there. There is nothing in there that's safe. It's still radioactive. There's an alien in there that Frank beat up, but we, I don't want to even go into that. Frank, what? Listen, tell us a little bit he about some, do some kind of probing thing. Squirrel, so of squirrel, I'm gonna squirrel. Ask you a question, Frank. Frank, what's thank, the question? Thank you, Lydia. The question is, Frank. I mean, while you were working, yes. Did you ever have any experience, paranormal or otherwise, like experiences? Uh, yes. To touch on some things like, you know, like Lydia said, you know, you, you walk in some days and, and you just feel that, you know what, there's just something is not right. And it's just going to, it's just going to be one of those days. And yeah, I would be when one of the blocks and I would get calls from somebody saying, Hey, uh, pay attention to your radio. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going on. Blah, 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 blah. We're not sure. So just, you know, be on your toes. So yeah, that happens. Um, I was working at Sing Sing and I actually was just talking to a buddy of mine today that was working there too as well. Down in um, A Block Yard, they have a, the, there's a building down there where they have uh, the boxing gym. At least back when I was in, back in the 90s when I was there, they had a boxing gym in there. I don't know what's there now, but it used to be the death house. It was one of the original, it was the original death house. So um, inmates lock in for the night around 9, 930. And, you know, there's, you know, if you're a roundsman or you don't have to worry about your, your gallery or something, you can, you have a little bit of free reign to walk around and just make sure things are okay. And once in a while, you know, when I was new, some of the guys would take me down there. They, Hey, you got to go check this out. So we'd go down there in the dark. And I'll tell you, you know, I love using the red, the red lights when we do things and because it enhances what you see. And I'll tell you what, I'd sit on that boxing ring and I would just look around and the smells and the sounds, it was just, it was the absolute creepiest thing I've ever experienced in my life. And I, I don't get too queasy about things too fast, you know, when we do the investigations and things like that. But I'll tell you what, that was the most uneasy feeling I've ever had in my, in my career for the, for the 26 years that I worked. Um, I did unfortunately work as Lydia said, you know, for, for the most part, I worked 90% of my career. I worked in a maximum security facility, but there was a couple of year, there was about a year or so that I did work in a medium. Um, it was in the mid state area. Uh, it was nineties. They had locked everything down. So there wasn't a lot of movement and transfers and things going on. So I had to stay in one spot. And when that finally opened up, halfway home, which was the Oneida area, you know, the Syracuse area, that kind of thing. Right. So I did one of the, one of the, one of the facilities in that area for about five months and I was working, it was Christmas day or Christmas Eve, rather. I was working Christmas Eve into Christmas day. And then Christmas day morning, I was heading home. Um, I'm sitting there. I was, you know, it's working the midnight shift. You, you do whatever you can to stay awake. So I was reading a book it was about 1.30 in the morning, and two inmates come running, I mean, running out of the back. And they sit down next to my desk, and I'm like, what are you two doing? Get back. They're like, I mean, they were ghost white. I mean, they were Casper white. It was, And I'm like, what is wrong with you two? The one says, I just got attacked. I got beat up. There's nothing in there. He didn't, you know, they come running and I'm laughing. I'm like, there's just no way. I'm like, you two get back in, you know, so get off my, off my little podium. And I'm standing there talking to them. And I'm like, you, and out of the corner of my eye, as I'm telling you, you need to go back into your room. I see this thing go. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, both of you need to get back in your room now. And I said, look, I don't really care what you do, but you can't sit here. So, you go lay down and go to sleep and you sit on your bed and you watch him. I go and then about an hour or so later, flip flop. So they're like, no way, no way. I'm like, listen, you can't stay here. Period. It's just, they just not, they're not allowed. So, so eventually I escorted them back to their room and one went to bed and whatever. So about 45 minutes later, making rounds, you know, you make rounds in inter, inter, interval rounds. So, you know, so you don't not get whatever. So about 40 minutes later, I'm making some rounds, 40, 45 minutes later. And I look in the room and sure enough, the dude on the right is sleeping. The dude on the left is sitting Indian style staring at him. I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, I'm not getting beat up and I'm going to make sure he's okay. I'm, I'm just <laughs> I was like, all right, dude, whatever. So I left and it was funny because about, 
35, 40 minutes later, I made another round. You know, it's like 3, 4, 30 in the morning, make another round. And now I'm really laughing because they did flip-flop. The other dude was awake and the other guy was sleeping. So I'm like, oh, my God. it was. But I can understand why because I did see this big black mass go from one side to the other. Didn't go in their room, but it went around to, like, the back area. So I was like, yeah. So between – between what I saw and heard at Sing Sing and that, there's just so much. Yeah, I mean, I've ha- I've had different experiences, and and I was a roundsman at on midnights, so I had keys to everything. So I had to go check everything. And there's there are rooms and buildings and things that you walk to, you just get that. Yeah, I need to make this round real Ick quick. Feeling, yeah, yeah, you know, I need to make this round real quick and get the hell out of here because it's just you get that uneasy feeling about things and. You know, and then sometimes I would just stick around and sit there and watch and wait. And I would watch and there's shadows here, shadows there. It was just, it, it really, those types of experiences were pretty cool. I mean, I, I mean, it was different. It was weird, but it was really cool. I mean, other than the, you know, the daytime stuff when you're dealing with, with what's going on. But that stuff was really cool. Here's another question we have from Peg in the chat room. Did you okay. notice higher tensions in the facilities when there was a full moon? That's actually oh, a good question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know, you know, like you'll hear law enforcement, like police officers and nurses always talking about, oh, it's a full moon tonight. Like it, it's the same exact thing in the prison. Um, mm-hmm. I remember one year, I think it was um, New Year's Eve and it was going to be a full moon. They actually put extra officers on that night yeah. for the midnight yep. shift, you know, just because it's like, oh, something's going to happen, you know, but luckily I don't remember if any, I don't think that night anything in particular had happened, but yeah, it's definitely, it is a legit thing. <laughs> oh, I think, I think it is. There's, there's a lot of superstitions that we all kind of look and laugh at and, but yeah, I mean, they, they, they take them serious inside the jails because I mean, you know, we all know how that energy works and whether it's a full moon, whether it's Friday the 13th, it's, you know, there's, and you can't give those inmates an excuse to do something dumb because they will use those days to do something. Oh yeah. Dumb. Oh, yeah. Cool. Always. And it's not just in the, it's just not in the prisons. It's not just in the state houses. It's not just in the psych, oh. in the psych wards. It's, it's all over. Hey, yes. I got to. We were talking about this just before we came on the air. <laughs> yeah, what, what are the odds of that? <laughs> Gee, uh, Joe I, Piari would like to know how the two of you met. <laughs> I was telling um, Tim right before we went on the air, I was like, you know, Frank and I have been friends for what, like two years now? Yep. And like actual friends for like two years. Right. Frank insists that he remembers me. I from did. My- my first week on the job because I had to do my training at his prison. And I was like, no, I never met you. Um, he, so he insists that he met me on my training when I first listen, became a CEO. It's, all one, it's always one of those, listen, I got to have one of those, listen, I trained so-and-so and I did so-and-so. Whether I did or I didn't, nobody really knows except for her and I. And if I say I did, I did. Everybody watching. No, she says no. But um, then we got introduced through um, just like mutual friends, but we've actually never met in person aside from the quote unquote training experience that did not happen. Well, I'm just going to, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something, Lydia. It may happen this year. Yeah. It, I mean, it, I, it I still have family in Buffalo, so I go back to Buffalo all the time. Cause that's where I grew up. Um, I got sent out to the Albany area when I became a corrections officer and I just never moved back. But every time, uh, <laughs> 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 oh, Joe. every time I go back to Buffalo, we're just never what? able to, <laughs> our schedules just never line up. And so we've never actually been able to meet anytime I've gone out to Buffalo. Right. I, I had I had to ask that I had to bring that question up, especially if somebody else asked it. That's wasn't my fault, question. Lydia. It wasn't my fault. But no, no, I, I, I saw it and I was like, oh, that's so funny. We literally yep. did that. Now let me ask you guys this one. Why the hell do you think that these these prisoners, these inmates, and even the guards, why would they stick around a prison? I mean, you know, a prison is not 
freedom. And yeah, I understand up to a point, especially if you're if you're a long, you know, a long termer. I mean, you're in there for a long sentence. I understand that, you know, I mean, because it becomes more of a home. Uh, the routine is there. But number one, why would they stick around, especially guards? Why would they stick around? And number two, do you think it's more residual uh, interactions than uh, intelligent interactions? And you know what? We're going to go with Frank on this one first, because otherwise, otherwise, you know, Lydia, what I'm going to tell you is this. He'll pout if I keep going to you first. So, okay. So I will go to you for we'll go, Frank. I'm we'll go. That <laughs> I would not pout. <laughs> okay, Frank. And, and that's, the, that's the question to you. <laughs> as far as far as the cons, as far as the cons sticking around, they really don't have much of a choice. They they get sentenced to what they get sentenced at. So whether it's three to five, you know, twenty five to life, whatever the case may be, they they have a for the most part they have an indeterminate amount of years to do so so they're stuck you know after three i believe it's three quarters or or whatever it is they can they're eligible for parole but they're stuck as far as officers go and and i'll speak for myself i was um i was 22 when i took the job so i was young and i had taken police exams and local exams and things like that and you get put on these lists and you wait and you wait and you wait and you know, I had five years in the job and, you know, one of the local facility, you know, one of the local police, they, you know, areas said, Hey, listen, you know, I've got an opening. We're going to do this, this, that, and the other thing. You got to wait about another six months to a year. And I had five years in the job at that point. I was almost, I was vested for the most part. I believe they had changed the rules. So I was already vested. So I was getting a pension and, you know, and corrections is a lot different than police work. We work eight hours a day. If you want to work overtime, you work another eight hours for the most part. If you want a day off, and Lydia knows this, if you want a day off, I could have went to Lydia and said, hey, listen, Lydia, I need Tuesday off. Can you work Tuesday if I work for you on this day? And if she says yes, that gives me Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday off. So now I have three days off. So in the end, what ended up happening was when I was working downstate, I would work a lot of doubles and a lot of uh, swaps is what we would call them. And I would, I, you know, I'd work them from like, you know, Labor Day or from, yeah, from Labor Day and all the way until Memorial Day. And I would literally, seriously, just like, just like teachers, I'd be off all summer long from Memorial Day to Labor Day again, because that's the way I was able to work it out. So for me, it became, why would I want to go somewhere else when I can, be, uh, I never have to work a summer if I don't ever want to again, if I want to do this type of stuff. So everybody has their reasons. But for me, it became it, it got to the point where I was able to get so much time off where, you know, I didn't have to use any time that it was advantageous for me to just stay. And again, being 22 and being dumb, young and so dumb and not understanding how things work until wait a minute end. wait a minute I, only, I being, wait, only 22 that. wait a minute how you're 54 now yeah i'm 54 you haven't changed no i know <laughs> i love you baby i love you frank lydia what's but, what, what's but what changed was oh okay. when i got to be about 27 or 28 years old i was a i got into the union and that's where a lot of perspective and a lot of things changed whereas you know what it's kind of like sports this is no longer something that's fun. This is a business and you need to do this, this, and this. And it became, it became a, it became a game for the most part where you stay a step ahead of the inmates and two steps ahead of the administration. So you could keep your job. I mean, a lot of guys don't ever read their employees manual. I, I read that book three times front to back. It's the Just, best it's the best bathroom reading you're ever going to find any kind of, any kind of union manual like that. It is. And because what it does is it gives you the tools to stay ahead of the game. Because once you get ahead of the game, they're going to change the rules because they don't like to lose. Mm -hmm. And when you're beating them at their own game, they will change the rules and you have to learn them all over again. So it was that I mean it 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 took a while to learn that, but that for me that was the I mean, that was the time off for me was what really kept me there for the most part. But Lydia, now, what do you, why do you think that people, why do you think people that just haunt prisons? Why, why do you that's, think that? That's what I thought you meant. Like that, that's exactly I, what I meant, but I let, but you know, Frank, 
Frank is my buddy, and you know, and I just let you know, him every, go. You know, I mean, you know, every so often, girl, but... you know, we have to, we have to, we have to humor him. You know, you know, it's a I mean. squirrel. It's a squirrel. <laughs> anyway, okay, Lydia, you're on, baby. Tell us what. Tell us why. <laughs> so I think. Um, so I'll start with inmates first. I think some of the reasons why inmates will stick around after they pass on to these prisons, um, mental institutions, wherever the particular um, situation arises, is. One, we actually talked about it last week when we discussed Alcatraz and um, Frank had brought up that Sylvia Brown had actually gone in there and she had picked up on the spirit of someone who was still lingering around. And he said that he was staying because he didn't feel as though he had served enough time to pay for what he had done. So I would say first, as far as an inmate goes, I would say some of them stick around because they still have guilt um, that they didn't serve enough time for the crimes that they committed when they were on earth. Another, a second reason that I think an inmate would stay and quote unquote haunt, um, you know, a prison or jail or mental institution would be that they're institutionalized. They don't know what else is out there. Uh, you know, I'm sure Frank, um, it might be a little different because he did work a lot of time in the maximum prisons. So they tend to have longer sentences than when I was working at the medium. Um, in the eight years I was with corrections, I saw some inmates that, you know, were on their second or third bid since I had started right. because they would get out. They'd go back to quote unquote real life and they didn't know what to do. So they immediately went back into something that got them put back into prison because when they're in prison, they have, the set rules they have the structure the structure that they they need so why even in death they might not be able to give that up that's something that they are just holding on to um and that's why i think some of them stick around in these places even after they die because that's what they know you know they're institutionalized they're stuck in that the routine as as tim is writing you know like that's what they know and they don't want to give that up even though they've passed on, they can't give it up because that's that's the only thing that they can hold on to. As far as officers go, again, it's routine. I knew officers that worked 30 years and for 30 years, they did the same exact thing. They would go in for their shift. On the way there, they would stop at um, the local coffee place. Like I know I have Stewart's and Cumberland Farms up by me, but you know, in Buffalo, more like Wilson Farms and things like that. 7-Eleven, they would always stop there on their way to work, get a coffee, grab a newspaper. They did that every single day for 30 years. There was one particular officer that even after he retired, he kept up that routine because he had done it for so long. And even though he still wasn't going into work at the prison for, and this particular officer had worked midnight shift, he still went to that local stewards every single night at about 9.30 p.m. and sat there with a coffee and a newspaper because that's what he had done for 30 years. So that could be one of the reasons officers stick around. There's probably officers that feel as though they have to keep on protecting. They have, you know, that that's what they are there for. They took that job and they're continuing on with that. We all took an oath when we went into the academy. Some of us take it more seriously than others. So some might stick around because they feel as though they still have work to do there. Yeah. Now we're getting to the end of the show. So really? We usually go two, three hours. What are you talking about? That's what she Listen, said. Wow. No, that's not what she said, but we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, <laughs> the two of you. Thank you. I think I, I think I'm getting a little red here. I think I think even under these lights, I think my face is getting a little red. So it's that, that golden time where we get a chance. We're we're just gonna segue the hell out of this one really quick. <laughs> <laughs> this has to be the sh listen. This has this is the, the shortest this, this show is the on plug, record. baby. This is the plug. Who this wants the plug? Who, on record. who wants the plug? I'll let Frank go first so he doesn't pout. <laughs> oh, how am I pouting? I'm having a great time here. I thought we were going to go a lot longer. Again, that's what she said. I, I thought that. That's yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know. I'm just. I'm just going to tell you something right now. There's probably people out there planning T-shirts around that phrase for Frank. 
I have a shirt that says that's what she said. Oh, well, nice. that's it. <laughs> I'm going to wear it next week. I'm locked up paranormal Monday nights. Hey! At night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that's what she said in squirrel. But seriously, now, what's going on now? Tell us, tell us all about the show. And again, you said it too quickly, Lydia. Just we'll go um, and let's go. Let's Lydia, go. And it's use time. Start. It's time to plug. I'm better this at is, talking. This, this is what this is what this is the only reason why this show exists for my guests to plug whatever they're doing. She, she's better <laughs> at talking, so go ahead. So, um, <laughs> as we have touched on, Frank and I have a little podcast that we just started. We are only two episodes in, and it's called Locked Up Paranormal. So, it's exploring paranormal activity across prisons, jails, mental institutions across the globe. So, our plan and our goal with the show is that each week we want to pick a different location, touch upon the history and any paranormal activity that's been reported there. So, that's going, that's Monday nights at 9 p.m., and it streams live from my Facebook, Frank's Facebook, Paranormal, um, Phantom Paranormals, um, Facebook, Phantom Hunters, I'm sorry, Phantom Hunters, um, Facebook, also. Um, our podcast is through Hellfire Entertainment. So if you follow Hellfire Entertainment on Facebook, you'll be able to stream it through that as well. Um, and then it also posts to Frank and mine's um, YouTube channels afterwards. So make sure you check that out. But also you have your own podcast. So it's, yes. you know, yes. listen, every, you know, I, I, I'm telling you, Lydia, Lydia, put it out there, baby. Be proud. Be proud. Uh, put it out there. So I have my own podcast called um, Just the Deeds with Lydia Manson, All Things Strange and Unusual. Um, Frank was actually a guest on my show. That's yes. how um, Locked Up Paranormal actually came into being. So Thank my you. podcast is Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Um, again, it streams through my Facebook, my YouTube channel, Have Fire Media's um, Facebook. Um, also, I'm on Instagram, little Lydia Manson 88. I'm on TikTok, Lydia Manson 88. Try to keep it simple. Um, but yeah. Uh, and then also, you know, check out my IMDb because I need a better score on there. And the more people that look at it, the better my score is. <laughs> That's how, hey, believe me, that was the first thing that I was stalking you on. My IMDb? <laughs> before, yeah, before. But you, you can always tell people that have that have a show or have had something to do with entertainment. Everybody goes with that. Okay, now, Frank. <laughs> Frank. Wait a minute, now, Frank. I'm listening. No. Focus, focus. Pay attention. Focus on focus. What's going on? Well. Frank, yes. Tell everyone what you're up to. Tell everybody about the upcoming events that you have gotten planned. And again, go a little bit deeper into the uh, into your into the family day that you guys are having. So, what we have coming up is on February 26th. We have a public we have public ghost hunts at the Western Block in Lockport, New York. Um, I run those with uh, my partner, Heather, who owns the building. Uh, those are going to be from 7 to 8.30, 9 to 10.30, and 11 to 12.30. Uh, they're $30 a person, uh, so it's an hour and a half. And again, we, do, uh, we, have, we get some great evidence out of those things. On that same day, we are also going to be doing a family kids type of learn to ghost hunt. Uh, we do get a lot of uh, requests from people, you know, can my, can my son come? Can my daughter come? You know, they're 10, they're 12, they're 13. We try not to do those things. We try to limit it to like 16 and above when we do the nighttime kind of stuff because it's a little, gets a little intense every now and then. Um, not all the time, but every now and then it does get a little intense. So we try to keep the younger kids out of it. But uh, what we had decided to do was... Um, put together a program for younger kids because, you know, they do watch a lot of the ghost shows and a lot of the ghost programs like, you know, ghost adventures and ghost nation and things like that. They do watch those things. So it's not, it's for them so they can get a hands-on view of what goes on, you know, the equipment that they, we use, the, the type of things, the type of things we have, the, the questions to ask, you know, those type of things. So it's a, it's a ghost hunting 101, learn to ghost hunt, check out the equipment, come and check out our facilities, that kind of stuff. Um, it's $25 per family. Um, so it's not like, you know, you have to pay per person. So if you have four, three or four or five people in your family and you want, you want to bring the kids, come on down, 
um, for 25 bucks, it's, it's two hours, you know, you're going to get a, you're probably going to get a little bit of little flashlight to, as a souvenir and some other little trinkets that we'll probably put together to, to give out. So people have a, a you know, souvenir of what, what went on and, you know, learn how to ghost hunt, learn how to learn, learn what they do on TV and hands on. So this way you can say to your friends, Hey, look, this is what I did this weekend. Why don't you come do it next time? And we can have fun and that type of stuff. Um, it's always good to teach the next generation how to do what we do and how to um, do it the right way, that kind of thing. Joe, absolutely. 15 kids, bring them all down. That's all outstanding. We'll have a good time with that. No problem. <laughs> Joe, Joe just Joe just wants to go and uh, he just wants you to make pizza for 15 kids and then we'll Listen, take to take the leftovers home. That's all I, I will make pizza. And I told Joe, you guys have you guys have parties, family parties, whatever. I have pizza ovens. I have enough. I will make you pizzas. You don't have to order from anybody. Order from me and I'll make them for you. We're all good. It's it's perfect. And and also one last thing I'm gonna plug in the near very, very near future, Frank and I will be cooking on para cooking on at from yes, paranormal we oddities. Yes, we and will. hopefully the mask mandate will be off. But uh we always encourage people to come up and uh try the cooking. And may I say sure. that his last chili was definitely not an ass burner, it was very good. So Lydia. It was it was almost safe, but I'm not going to go quite quite Listen, that far. At least the pizzas were good. Pizzas were excellent. <laughs> pizzas were excellent. So hey guys, I want to thank you guys so much for being here and, on my show, know. and I thank love you, you guys. Much. You guys are fantastic. You guys have done a great show. It's different, and I think you guys are starting to break some new ground, which has to be done. And it's really just going to. I I can't wait for your future shows. And Stick around. The- just so you know, for next Monday, I'm going to put it out there. The next show we're going to be about is... I don't know. Leavenworth. Oh, I'll start doing research. We're going to do some research on Leavenworth. I'm working on it now, but it's going to be about Leavenworth. Leavenworth, Fresno Prison in Kansas. You know, a little bit of a history, a little bit of the hauntings, that kind of stuff. So that's I'm working on working on those those things right now. So it's going to be about Leavenworth. And if you guys ever want to go and uh, do a ship, that's crazy. Uh, Bill Randall's. I want to uh, do the Sullivan ship. <laughs> oh, I got one. Believe me, you know what? Sullivan's are great. I've done them, but this is even better. Bay City, Michigan, USS Edson. It's got a history to it, and. Bill, I'd, Bill, I'd love to come do your place. And absolutely. Believe me, believe I'll me, bring Tim, absolutely. We we did a, we did a séance and we had something. Poor Bill and <laughs> something went right through Bill. But we'll talk Tim, about that. Tim, at, Tim, can we do table tip in there too? We did tell yeah, we can do table. Uh, you know that. Let's so, do it. I'm in. <laughs> you're in. You, you know what? Let's do it. I, let's Lydia, do it. I just, Lydia, I just go like this. I get on my, I get on, I get on my texting machine there, the phone, and I go and I send him a text. What are you doing tomorrow? I'm in. That's all I get. I'm in. You know, I could be taking them someplace crazy. And yet, every time I've gone to Buffalo and I said, hey, let's meet up, I get a, oh, I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. Well, sorry. You know, Lydia, you got got to know when the rate. That's all there is to it. You got to know when the rate. (laughs) Hey, stick around. I want to thank you guys both properly off the air. Absolutely. And uh, you guys are fantastic. Really. You you guys were so much fun. I I love and. When you guys are you guys gonna come back again? Absolutely, anytime you want. It's be, this was great. I love I love working with you guys. See you in just a couple seconds here. Absolutely. Hey everybody, thank you again for you know just hanging out Tuesday. I I can't believe I said it was a Thursday night. I want to rush my week. It's retired. This is what happens when you retire. You forget you forget what day it is anyway. But thank you for sharing your Tuesday nights with me. And as always, there's so much going on in the paranormal right now. There's so much fun going on and you know one last i'll give you guys one last gander of me and my stunt double there's my stunt double guys looks just like me thank you guys anyway what have you been doing you've been listening to well the black cat lounge here where the elite meet next to the dumpster transfer station guys ciao babies be good see you next week And if you guys have any craziness that you want to talk about, let me know because I'm always open for new craziness. Ciao, babies. Bye-bye.